Could you put like uh you know my tweet about it? Can you like retweet it but put the new link in, please? Honey. Can yes, do that? I'll do that your live. I said you're your live, oh. so yeah. You did not say I was live. Okay. So maybe I'm a little stone too. That's fine, so it's my <laughs> we, guess. We all are. We are we'll take it slow, we'll take it slow. <laughs> because I'm baked too shit. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it's YouTube, so we have to have technical difficulties anyway. So. Of course, of course. <laughs> so welcome everyone. I am Mama Atheist. Call me Amanda. Um, and this is Living Critically. And tonight we have something very special because you, Robert, are the first person to be on this show twice. Yay me! <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I love being the first at anything, or almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. There are some notable exceptions. Yeah, I can. I can think of a few. <laughs> oh yeah, right on the same page. <laughs> um, and, and tonight we have a very special episode of Living Critically as well. Because what are we talking about tonight, Robert? Uh, how much the South sucks. From a Southerner's point of view, apparently. <laughs> yes. From a Southerner's point of view and from someone who lives in the South but is a Yankee. So. Tell you, this place, place is... Connecticut. This place is different. Yeah. Very, like, very different. <laughs> I, I it Honestly, it was such a huge culture shock for me because, um, like, I, you know, I lived... was born and raised in Connecticut... Uh, I went to school in Arizona and also lived there in Southern Arizona, which is not, you know, which is a red state technically, although it's getting better. Um, but it's still, there's a difference between like red states and something like the South, which is an entity all on its own. And I think uh, from my point of view, at least, it has to do with honestly the Confederacy and the history that is rooted here. Why do you think it's like this? I, I think you nailed it. I actually think you nailed it. What? Nailed it? I think I said that right. Uh, I got into <laughs> <laughs> So just, for anyone who's watching, the big guy may be a little bit enhanced. <laughs> so if I trip over my words, you know, you know why. I but am I, too. It's so all good. One big happy family. Yeah. But I, I got in not got into it. It just one of those, I just wasn't in the mood. And I was going back and forth with someone on Twitter, kind of. And mm. this person was talking about what the Confederate flag means to him. And, you know, he said it stands for like strength or pride or something. And, you know, it reminds me of the Dukes of Hazard. And I was like, that's great. And I just didn't want to get into it. But, you know, as a black person, that's that's something I would wipe my ass with after a massive diarrhea laden shit. And and I'm trying to remember what he said. Cause I didn't answer the question. And he wanted and he finds like long story short, I was trying to convey to him basically, if you slap me on Monday, I'm still gonna be pissed about it on Tuesday. Yeah. And he was like, Well, why can't you just let it go? So I'm like, fuck face. The South was built oh. on slavery and racism and dehumanizing everyone who looked like me. And motherfuck me, people who look like you, if you had a vagina, you weren't, you know, in the in crowd either. And so when you hear things like, why don't you let it go? It's like, you know what? I'm going to keep it real for everyone in the audience. Only a white dude can fucking say some shit like that. And so if yeah. you want to know why the South sucks, is because there's a portion of us who's been saying since day one, hey, these are the issues, but you've got the ruling class sitting here saying, get over it. It's not that bad. I actually treated you nice. I mean, I, I remember an interview with Ike Turner before he passed. And when they were trying to nail him down with, did you ever hit Tina? He finally admitted it, but he said, I only did it with an open hand. Yeah. I'm just like... And that makes it better. <laughs> so no, again, the South sucks because there's a portion of us that just won't let it go, and it's the wrong portion. Yeah, it's not yeah. Us. I it's have the them. perfect thing for that guy that you supposed to be on Twitter. I got a new sign, so I haven't been gotten <laughs> able to hang it up yet. But, uh, but I would. That, that is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is perfect. And with that, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. I just didn't get into it because just some days you just oh, don't feel like being the educational Negro. Because yeah. if, again, I shouldn't have to explain to someone. Again, if you slap my mother across her face, I'm going to hate you forever. I'm going yeah. to dislike you for the rest of your life and into the next one. And when you come and knock on my door and say, hey, Robert, can I borrow a cup of sugar? I'm going to kick you in your dick. And when you're like, well, well that, was, that was in the past. I, I did it three years ago. I'm like, fuck face. You slap yeah. my mom. I will hate you forever. And yeah. so that's just something that happened one time. Now imagine generation after generation after generation after generation after generation of slavery, dehumanization. It, it's it's interwoven into the very fabric that is the South. And so when you yeah. hear it, why don't you get over it? Or what do you have to complain about anymore? And they're like, you know, if I at this stage, if I have to explain it to you, you're almost not worth the effort. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for you to die and the next generation take over <laughs> where their attitude won't be as shitty. Yeah. Just that's how I feel about it. Yeah. But that's the thing too though that it's not just a matter of like just get over it there is uh still a an unlevel playing field because oh, yeah. you know not only were black people subjugated and for so very long but it's not like when you know the the slaves were freed they were you know handed uh, your I, white now pass exactly you know, Everything that um, African American African Americans have had to struggle through, just because they were barely considered people after they were given their freedom. Preach it, preach it. I I have said that so many times, and I'm so glad to hear someone else say it. But I mean, it's okay. I, you could say it, a white lady. <laughs> it's good to hear a white lady say it. <laughs> so I, I remember. And this was a while back on Twitter where I was trying to kind of go through my family tree and kind of where we are. And I was like, you have to understand. I mean, one, my father was shot in the civil rights march. If that guy was any better aim, I wouldn't be here. My mother was spat upon in sit-ins. Now, that's just my parents. Now, rewind to my grandparents, who by all practical purposes were slaves without the title. And then when you go to my great grandparents, they were actually slaves. And someone returned the tweet about my grandparents. And because they did the timeline with how old I was, and they're like, well, I, I look like Trump there for a minute, didn't I? With the <laughs> the <laughs> 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 but he did the timeline with kind of how old I was, am. And it was like, well, your grandparents couldn't have been slaves because that was, you know, 19 blank. And I said the exact same thing. I'm like, okay, do the fucking math for me. So when the slaves were finally freed, like you said, they weren't handed the keys to a Fortune 500 company. Yeah. We were still uneducated. We were still looked upon as mindless brutes. And so when my great-grandparents were freed, what the fuck do you think my grandparents did? The exact same thing that their parents did. They just did it minus the label. Yeah, And so, I mean, it's like, and it kind of, I hope this ties in, but I remember watching people bitch and complain because I've been doing the same job for over 20 years and I've watched kids grow up and I've watched kids be born and those kids are now going to college. And I've watched people with legacy admissions bitching and complaining that their kids didn't get into Name the school, Florida, Florida State, Texas, whatever. We're fifth generation Longhorns. We're fifth generation Aggies. And some Mexican took my kids, you know, spot. I'm like, one, you assume just because you're white and legacy, and the legacy that your kid is an automatic admission. No, so, that's not I how it hate works. Legacies. I hate it so right. fucking much. Exactly. And it's, it's a pile of bullshit. Because when they talk about how unfair it is, I'm like, again, let's do the timeline. I'm right at 48 years old. I made All-American in football at a school, and my dad was a better athlete and a way better student than I was. 
the University of Texas at Austin literally told my dad, no niggers allowed. Yeah. So that's just one generation behind me. So mm -hmm. while they told my dad, no niggers, your parents got in. Mm -hmm. My grandparents, again, they were slaves without the title. Your grandparents got into the University of Texas. When your great grandparents were the first, you know, set of Longhorns or whatever, my great great grandparents were your great great grandparents' slaves. So yep. please talk to me about how fair things are. You've had literally a 400 fucking year head start. Don't turn around and tell me I'm lazy. Don't tell me you whipped my ass in the 100 meter dash when you lined up at the 99 meter mark and I have to yep. run the full 100. I'm not lazy. Don't tell me to pull me up on my bootstraps and don't tell me how someone took your kid's spot in a legacy admission because it wasn't your kid's fucking spot. Someone beat your kid. You're finally starting to feel one one millionth of what everyone else has felt. Yeah. And it was funny is you can you can actually correlate, you know, a legacy and 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 the situation with white people and slaves in a way, because it's like, you know, at one point however many years ago you know uh, some white european pulled himself up by his bootstraps and and did and spent all of his money to come to america and build a life but right. since then you know you've had uh, generations worth of posting and it's the same for a legacy you know maybe five generations ago your great 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 whatever grandparents got in and since then, it's just been like legacy after legacy, and nobody in your family has really earned that at all. Whereas there's some other kid out there whose family, you know, is the first kid to, to uh, in their entire family to apply for college, which they, you know, colleges pay attention to because they want to see right. that your baby is right. educated as well. But, you know, also doesn't have the money to, just has all the disadvantages of the world. It's complete swap so it is it, 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 you, you kind of hit on something wow was that me or but you kind of hit on something big and because i i hear that as kind of a rebuttal <clears throat> where well you know robert my my parents came over my great great grandparents came over here they had 17 dollars to their name they work hard we save so on and so forth it's like two things that's wrong about what you just said one, you're white. So you have to understand <laughs> what an advantage that gives you right off the bat, whether you want to admit it or not, it's irrelevant. You have mm -hmm. an advantage because you don't look like this. And two, they chose to come over here. They chose to come over here and partake in whatever the fuck you want to call the American dream. Now, yeah. unlike fucking Ben Carson, who says that slaves were just immigrants on the bottom of boats who wanted a piece of the American dream, first and foremost, he can go fuck himself. Yes. Him, all the super coons. And I'm just going to name as many as I can right now because I've had people tweet at me and say shit like, why can't you sound like him or her? It's like, you know why? Because I've got pride in my skin color and those people can go fuck themselves. Candace Owens, uh, mm -hmm. Ben Carson, uh, the Hodge twins, uh, Stacy Dash, Diamond and Silk, Crotch Rot and Mildew, I don't give a fuck. Just name them all. And you can name the ones that will sell out their own race. But we were not brought here voluntarily. And again, this goes back to what I said. Don't tell me how you whipped my ass in the 100 meter dash when you lined up at the 90 meter mark. Yes, your family chose to come here. And they had the advantages of not looking like me. Congratulations. We were brought yeah. under as cargo. No, no different than this ace bandage. You were property. <laughs> if I burn this, no one's going to give two shits. Just mm -hmm. like when they strangled George Floyd, it was like stepping on a roach. Mm -hmm. That dude was fucking emotionless. So, I mean, that's just the bottom line. And yeah. that, welcome to the South. <laughs> welcome to the yeah. South. And, you know, I. You, uh, I want to talk about why uh you know the two of us have issues with it with our personal experiences which mine will since i've only lived here a few years and again i'm just a white woman are far less than what you've had to endure um but if, a few things first uh about the south subjectively things that are really bad and which contribute it's not just the history but also the 
it's just the way of life here and the poverty levels and everything, the education systems, all of it. There's a reason why it sucks so much. Yeah. And one of the things you can tell, first of all, is if you look at um, a economic map of our country, say red is below, you know, poverty line. It is the South is just a straight swath of red. It's just completely no red. No Except shock. maybe no a shock. little tiny less in Florida. Yeah. But compared, yeah. there's nowhere else in the country that is as bad as it is here. In fact, um, other than Florida, every southern state, and when we're talking about southern for people that don't know, it's below the Bible Belt in America, <laughs> um, but not like the Southwest. It's the, the Confederate states, the, the states that try to, you know, become their own nation in order to keep slaves traitors. Um, yeah absolutely traitors that we that our president loves to herald today for yep. some reason <laughs> um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but other than florida um every other every other southern state is at the bottom of the barrel absolute lowest minimum wage level like the the basement floor of the federal level um obesity rates are the highest in the south um southern states didn't expand medicaid under obamacare which has made them have to spend a shit ton more money because they're just picking up slack of what they fucked up yeah. um highest uh rates of cigarette smokers highest rates of teen births least happy states in the country highest rates of crime illiteracy poverty lowest levels of education um, considered the most superstitious and ignorant part of the entire industrialized world. Um, and also uh, the only economic, the only real economic growth uh, in the South in the past 40 years or so, other than like military bases, um, has been uh, plants that have moved over from both Europe and China in order to pay really low wages because they yeah. can get away with that and a right to, yeah. to work policy. So that is why it objectively sucks. There's no question. That's, I mean, shit. Flip-flopping between Texas and Louisiana and, you know, especially when you talk about public school education. Mm -hmm. For, I think yeah. Georgia is 46th or 48th, uh, one or the other. And that's where I live. With and my I'm, kid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, at least when I was in, a kid, like Louisiana was on the bottom 40s. Texas yep. is very close behind. I think the only one that was beating us was like Arkansas or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, it, it, I would like to say it all stems from our shitty education system. But I, I don't. Fuck me. I, I, I don't know if I can put my finger on a single thing. You know, yeah. I mean, the way that, you know, schools are paid for in this country is, I think, the biggest issue is because schools are funded through property uh, tax. Yes, 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 yes. So, yes. I mean, and so much of the South is already impoverished. You have yes. like in Atlanta as, as great. I mean, obviously, honestly, not because I live here, but because I just it, it seems like one of the better cities in the South. It, it really is. It's very diverse. It's, it, there's a lot of culture there. But it's still probably at least 60% well below the poverty line. Yeah. You know, you have places like Buckhead that have, you know, all the millionaires. But then you go six blocks over and yeah. they're shooting people at a fucking Wendy's. Exactly. It's insane. Exactly. My, I think I was in high school. Because I think at that point my mom was teaching at East Central. But they initiated the Robin Hood program and i don't remember if that was just texas or all the way around mm -hmm. but the robin hood system is exactly what it sounds like they took from the rich and they gave it to the poor yeah if you have a million dollars and you lose two hundred thousand, you still got a lot of money And that's pretty much what the Robin Hood program was saying. It's like, look, like Alamo Heights had a shit. I can't remember if we, what we took. I can't remember all the logistics. But it's like Alamo Heights was one of the nicer neighborhoods when I was in high school. And it's like, okay, if you have just a little bit less, 
and you help out someone who's going to Fox Tech. One, you still have a shit ton, so don't complain. And two, you help this person out. Now, you think that's shitty because you have to do with less, but every time you complain about someone not being able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, why don't you just work hard? Because it's shit like that. Again, if you would just come off just a little bit of your privilege, you aren't necessarily giving to the poor. You're helping somebody out. And again, if you want to complain less later down the road, give up some privilege, right? Mm -hmm. This kid, my my dad, who still is, matter of fact, here's this ugly fucker right here. The guy in the middle. I love that guy. Can y'all see my dad? (laughs) That's the major. He's still one of the greatest men, if not the greatest man I've ever known. And one thing my dad did before he retired was basically, if you needed help, Coach Reed would help you. That that dude's been coach, and he hasn't coached in years. (laughs) And he got a kid a scholarship. I'm trying to remember where it was. But all this kid knew was poverty. Inner city San Antonio. And... I can't remember where he went, but his first like week or month in college, he called my dad. He's crying. It's like, Coach Reed, this is the first 45 day stretch that I've gone to bed and I didn't hear gunshots outside my front doorstep. And for lots of people, that's just some shit you see on TV. For this kid, it was real. So imagine mm-hmm. again, if you have a million dollars and you have to come up off of 200,000, you still have a shit ton of money. You're going to be okay. And if we use that, those funds to help kids like that get out of that situation, they get, how, how, how do you say no to that? How do you say no to that? And it just the South, again, education, uh, we're, we're crabs in a bucket. And when one goes up, we try and pull that fucker down superstition is going to kill us Mm -hmm. i mean wasn't it alabama who uh passed that ridiculous abortion bill where it was like it it, basically if you perform an abortion that's like a 99 year prison or some shit like that yeah there's been a lot of abortion lately yeah (laughs) and and i remember the state uh man the state's women instead of getting them the first thing they said was that you know this is the legal system in action Hey, this is what, you know, governmental checks and balance looks like. The first thing they said was, this was a victory for God. Fuck me. And you're like, yeah. (laughs) This is what happens when you let a superstition run your life. Again. And stuff like that, it actually increases the, not only increases the rate of abortions, it also increases the rate of fatal abortions. Uh, Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, if you want to keep people safe, you legalize things like abortion. Yeah, right? They just, they, you know, you can give them the numbers all you want, they but uh, they don't give a shit about the people. They don't give a shit about the kids that, you know, are going to be forced to be born and live horrible lives and get abused and neglected because, yeah. you know, they were born into a family that didn't want them. All they care about is being able to go to bed at the end of the day and say, I did God's work. Yep. And the fucked up thing, the real fucked up thing is, and you know I'm right. Anyone who hears this, they know I'm right. They don't give a fuck because either you look like me or you're poor or a Mm -hmm. mixture of both. But do not think for two fucking seconds when some fucking rich congressperson or Trump knocks up someone they're not supposed to knock up. Oh, you better believe that abortion is happening straight away. Straight away. And again... It's that separation, right? Again, Mm -hmm. if you have a million dollars, you can't relate to the person who makes a dollar an hour. When, again, it's... It's the simple solutions I like to come up with. Well, just don't have sex. Well, brilliant (sighs) discovery there, fucking Copernicus. Guess what? People (laughs) are going to have sex. So let's teach them about condoms, diaphragms, STDs. Let's make all kinds... Open up Planned Parenthood clinics because abortion is only that much. 3%. Perform. Yeah. So let's get people birth control. It, it actually works for men as well. So again, that superstition that you said earlier, that's also what's crushing the fucking South. You can pray Why all you, you want, but if you yeah. fuck someone without a rubber, they're going to get pregnant. Well, they don't want you fucking at all. 
That's the thing. Like, you have stuff like teaching. The only sex ed you can find mostly in the South is abstinence only stuff. Yeah, don't do you it. You know, I think, and so many less. I mean, for fuck's sake, I think in the top half of my state where I live, I live near Atlanta, there's maybe four places you can, nope, three. There's three places that you can get an abortion. Um, when you take away these options, this is why the South has the highest levels of, you know, teenage births. Because for, you know, you're not teaching these kids how to control themselves. You know they're going to do it anyway. But these are the, the godly people. And this is yeah. the Bible help. So shouldn't they be the least likely to have teen abortion or teen pregnancy? Shouldn't they be more educated about this? But see, that's, it reminds me of that fucked up ass debate I did with godless piece of shit. I won't even say her name. Oh, oh I know what you're yeah, talking about. That yeah. I will never say her name out loud again. But yeah. we have something similar. Uh we have a certain someone that we call asshole 104 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, some people do not deserve actually uh uh one of my followers we're friends there's my little 16 year old I call her baby girl and I'm gonna steal her line because I love it. She doesn't deserve a face. <laughs> just, I will not give that person an audience. I will never say her name. But my yeah. debate partner, she straight up said superstition kills. And she's absolutely right. It does. And again, I'm not a parent, but I remember being a kid mm -hmm. and it's the Oreo cookie analogy. Your kid says, can I have an Oreo before dinner? If you're smart, you say, knock yourself out. Have an Oreo. Go ahead. You'll never guess what. They're going to have the Oreo. Their curiosity will be satisfied. And they're still going to eat their entire dinner. Fuck around and tell that kid, no, don't, you know, you'll ruin your dinner. Don't touch that Oreo. You just made that entire box of fucking Oreos the most delicious thing on the planet. And their only <laughs> mission now is to go behind your fucking back and eat all 27,000 Oreos. Right? Yes. <laughs> and so please continue to tell people, don't mm. fuck. Please continue to tell yeah. people what they can't do. Please continue. I actually saw, because I'm an education major, I actually saw a film from like the 80s from one of the California independent school districts. And it was an abstinence-only film. And it was so tragic, all I could do was laugh. And they basically, and I still remember the last, because it was all skits. And it was a classroom uh, situation and all the kids were asking all the right questions and the teacher could just give a monosyllabic answer. And of course, the last one was always Johnny. So he raises his hand and was like, well, yes, Johnny, what what, what do you want to know about sex? And like, well, teacher, what she said, well, what if I can't wait for marriage to have sex? And I swear you, this is a word for word quote. Well, Johnny, you need to be prepared to die. And the film goes to black, and I'm like, and that was the end of the film. And I'm sitting here in this room, I'm like, did anyone else just see this bullshit? But the people that they shoved that down their throat, don't you know, everyone went off and got jerked off behind the football stadium right after that fucking film. And yeah. so it's, it, it's this prohibition only, no education. Again, to tie it back into the South, I never got sex ed mm -hmm. ever yeah. in high school. And when I finally had the sex ed class, Coach Sullivan put on the best of the best. A movie about Olympic Taekwondo starring Eric Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> that was my sex education. <laughs> I'm almost 50 and I'm still waiting for my first sex ed class. <laughs> it reminds me of um, my, my friend Stuttering Chris. Um, uh, shared this video with me the other day of it was I think it was from the 90s a, a, a anti-drug ad that was um, oh where the, the guy kept pushing weed on his his friend and he finally goes to smoke it and his head literally explodes oh and there's God. blood everywhere <laughs> so I remember that Chris, because God doesn't like sex only sex only Satan does so. what's that I said, speaking of stuttering, Chris, he says, God doesn't like sex. Only Satan does. So. Okay, one, that is the best screen name I have heard in quite some time. <laughs> stuttering Chris. 
That is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> and he is the best. I was actually, actually the only I, I kind of walked back what I said. The only sex education I got, and I did get some. Did I just hit puberty? Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> My voice just cracked. <laughs> it wasn't the, the foot long um, breath that you had earlier. <laughs> just so you know, since we're here and I just say, fuck it. I almost sent you the tweet or the DM. <laughs> and at this point, we're going to lose the entire audience. But it's like, I just rolled a joint the size of my dick. <laughs> like, okay, just say foot. Just say foot. Just say foot. <laughs> no, I appreciate the dick jokes. Because if you remember the other okay. day, I told, um, because we were on <laughs> Christmas show, and you were like, and told him about your cat's name. And he's like, well, I am black. <laughs> and Dave and I both read the tweet at the same moment, like as we're on the show. And Dave was like, holy shit, I don't just kiss myself. <laughs> and Dave is hard to crack. <laughs> I remember that. So well, like, I have you seen Robert's fuck stick? <laughs> Truth be told, that name just came to me. I didn't think about that or anything. We're just like, fuck stick? <laughs> it just kind of fit. But now I can kind of see how fuck stick sounds like dick. That, that's great. Where the fuck were we? Oh, sex education. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Let's rewind it from fuck stick. By the way, fuck stick's the name of his cat if we didn't mention <laughs> that. <laughs> yes, fuck stick. How about this? Fuck stick is the name of my orange pussy. How about that? <laughs> it's actually a true statement. <laughs> oh, we just lost a whole audience just with that one. Oh, have you not met my friends? This is totally in their wheelhouse. <laughs> oh, I just, oh my God, I hope my parents aren't listening. <laughs> I told them I was going to do this tonight. And my mom right now, I want to check the text. You can see if my dad just said your mother had a stroke. Okay, I'm good so far. <laughs> the only sex education I had growing up was basically... What you're thinking is wrong and evil. Yeah. And, you know, you. I, I speak for every probably teenager, not just teenage boys. But there's that magical moment where you figure out what this can do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I was just like every other kid. I was a fucking, you know, water sprinkler. I was like, <laughs> oh, stop. And I felt guilty as shit because yeah. it felt good. Mm -hmm. And I remember, God, I was early in high school. We had what had to have been the shortest tenure of any Surgeon General because there was a Surgeon General who's like, let's teach not just education based sex education, but there's nothing wrong with teaching masturbation and not these are the skill like you use this much lotion or use watch this. But it was like it is a normal form of sexual self exploration. Just mm -hmm. facts. Bam, that person was fired. And I'm trying to remember this person's name. I got to look it up. But now that I'm almost 50 and I'm looking back at that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that's not COVID, everybody. I'm fine. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm like, that's that's marvelous. Right. And again, especially when you sit here down in the South and I've looked these stats up, too. And not only do we lead the nation in teenage pregnancies, we lead the nation in teenage abortion repeat pregnancy for teenagers and repeat abortion. Yeah. If we would just educate these kids, I, I truly cannot think of a situation where education is not the better choice. Yeah. I just, I just truly can't. You know, it's really sad to say, but this was many years ago. I'll go with um, my sex education started in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, we not only learned that about what masturbation was, we learned about safe sex. And I think the only time I remember hearing the word abstinence was just the definition of it. It wasn't something that was even pushed. But again, I grew up in fucking Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't see that here now, nearly 20 years later. 
Yeah, something like that. 30 years later. Fuck, I don't know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> she will go with 20 years. How about that? Fair but enough. Yeah, you have, you know, it, it sucks that there's this difference between so, you know, so much of the, the country and, and uh, most other states are at least progressive enough to start the dialogue about having a realistic sex ed in their schools and depends on usually it depends on the district or whatnot but it's just not it is not even a question here in the south they won't do it you know luckily I, my kid you know i have given him all the talks so many times he's sick of talking about sex with me yeah. i've even yeah. spoken to most of his friends about sex i've had his and it, so much and they're they're so comfortable with it that i've had some of his friends come and tell me when they've lost their virginity. Sure. You know, sure. whereas I grew up with a mom who, you know, she did get, she's a nurse, so she did get me birth control when I, when I eventually lost my virginity. But, she, you know, we, I was raised Catholic. So, you know, sex is wrong and you should feel kind of bad about it. And, but she knew I was going to do it anyway. And right. masturbation was definitely, you know, a horrible thing. Right. Uh, which is right. funny because she now currently owns an entire drawer full of dildos. But that being said, you know, I guess just for me, it was wrong. Um, but I'm, you know, my <clears throat> idea, not just the, with the sex education, but I think in terms of education in general in this country, the solution is to put a flat tax, you know, across the board on everybody and it'd be a federal tax so that way you don't have, you know, the rich paying less or whatever. Um, and then it is distrib distributed evenly to every school district in the country. It's just the only way to do it. This property tax bullshit is fucking people up. Because when you have people under the poverty level that, you know, fight and sacrifice in order to be able to get into a college or at least to try to apply to get into a college, you know, regardless, they could have the best grades. You know, schools will look at where they're from and say, yeah, well, you probably didn't get a you know, a good physics class or whatever, because you come from an impoverished school zone. So it, it yeah. harms them before they even have a chance to have an education for themselves. Not only are they learning less and learning at a lower level, but they also have so many less opportunities. And that happens when you rely on poverty taxes for this shit. I, I hate watch Ben Shapiro from time to time because I, my blood pressure is not high enough as it is. <laughs> and I remember him talking about this. He was trying to debunk like white privilege or whatever the oh. fuck. And uh, he talked about this. <clears throat> and he said the same thing with like Hurricane Katrina survivors, which is kind of fucked up because my family was only about 90 minutes away from Katrina. And he said something along the lines of, just pick up and move. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of like a, what Ivanka said. Just, yeah. just all the people out of work. Just go get another job. Just, yeah. How easy is that, right? And it's like you, you uh -huh. sound like someone who has never seen the Fifth Ward of New Orleans. Yeah. Because if you have, you probably wouldn't have said, "Oh, just reach into your bank account, go grab 130k, just put something nice on a nice, you know, apartment in New York, and you'll be just fine." He talked about property taxes <clears throat> and pretty much, you know, this isn't an issue. And again, oh, yeah. Alamo Heights was a very nice neighborhood. SISD, Fox Tech, Jefferson, all those schools, let's just say not so much. And Ben just basically said, just pick up and go to Alamo Heights. Again, fuck yeah. faith. It's not that easy. To me, that's no different than telling someone who's in the depths of depression, just be happy. Do you not think yeah. we haven't already thought about that? If it was just that easy yeah. to stop working for $13 an hour and try and stretch that out over four miles, don't you think those people would have done it by now? And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that suggestion. I'm not an economics guy. I can barely keep my own checkbook. Uh, balanced but again if you have a million dollars and i'm asking you to come up off of 100k or 200k you still have 800,000 left yeah you're going to be okay now unless you develop a severe coke habit but if that 200,000 helps other people i i i, I 
I would do that in a fucking heartbeat. <laughs> and I don't have a million dollars just to blow. And so I just, again, yeah, the property taxes. Uh, one of the shittier parts here is right off of 51st and airport Runberg area. And there was a school, Austin Johnston, I think, that got shut down here maybe five or six years ago. Their achievement scores were terrible. Their football team was awful. And for people who don't know, it costs money to have a high school football program. And yeah. they couldn't get 50 people in the stand, so they're just bleeding money. A lot. Hmm. And one of the suggestions was something along the lines of, well, why don't you just get the parents to help out with the homework? Well, you haven't seen the demographic mm -hmm. of the people who send their kids to Austin Johnston. A lot of these people didn't speak English as a first language. Yeah. They're cleaning toilets, mowing yards. Mm -hmm. So when they come home from their third job, one, their kid who's in the 11th grade has made it further in high school than they did. So what kind of help do you think mommy and daddy are going to be able to give their kids if that's the situation? Yeah. And again, it, it's this snap your fingers and it's just that easy solution. And it's insulting to everyone who's on this rung. Because again, Ivanka, she's never wiped her own ass. She's yeah. never combed her own hair. She's she probably never driven. to get a job. Yeah, exactly. She's, yeah. She holds a position in the White House that people twice her age have to work a lifetime to just to fill out a fucking application. Now, yeah. this idiot is the senior advisor to the president of the United fucking States. And her yeah. only job qualification is that she has the right last name. Yeah. And so these are the people, her, Ben Shapiro, who's like, well, just do this. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't get to weigh in on just do this if you've never had to do that. Yeah. So please exactly. stop talking. Please stop talking. You are insulting everybody. Did you know that that this year was this remember this year or this year and last year? It was the first time in the history of our country that the 400 most most wealthiest people in America paid the smallest tax bracket or smallest amount in taxes. I don't know whether I am shocked or disgusted. Yeah. By what you just said. Say that one more time so I can get thoroughly upset, please. For the first time in American history, the top 400 wealthiest Americans pay the lowest tax rate. The lowest, bottom of the barrel lowest. Yeah. Because, and our president, you know, continues to cut entitlements and they're, they're pushing, they want to cut, you know, um, uh, an employment uh, benefits right now and they're they're reasoning they're saying oh well people that are on unemployment are making more money than people that are uh, working which a is not true but b think about it if that were so maybe your minimum wage is kind of fucked like oh, we're doomed yeah. <laughs> can, can the meter just hit us now <laughs> it's just we got climate change so good. that's good can we speed it up because just sometimes <laughs> Just like with that cat who needed me to explain why the effects of slavery are still prevalent today. Mm -hmm. it just, it, what you just said has kicked me back to conversations that I've overheard at work over the last decade and a half, two decades. And he's like, you know what? Fuck you. Just, yeah. and I, I used to, one of the guys at work, let's just say he's not poor. And I remember we were right on the lip of uh, Hillary versus Trump. Mm -hmm. And this dude said, straight up, he had more money than God. I'm like, Robert, if I die tonight, my wife and kids will never want for anything. And he straight up told me, if Trump's in the White House, I will financially benefit. I'm going to make more money. Yeah. But he's basically like, how much more do I need? My, my, my family lives, you know, look at this. <clears throat> we're, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah. Right. And so then I hear the contrast where, again, it's, well, my kid didn't get in such and such a school because a black person took their spot. 
you know, and, and it's great. You, you get to save money or you get to make more money under this person. But at what point does your soul become for sale? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you didn't have to pay as much in taxes. But again, if you made. Actually, there was a dude who worked out at my gym and I don't even know if I can say it, but his family. You know, people that have worn his family's clothes. I'll say that. Okay. And I remember him and he was a hardcore died to the wool Democrat. And when everyone else was bitching, complaining about taxes and all the problems of being rich, it's like, if you've, if you've got a bad tax day, all that means that you had a great year, right? Yeah. It's like, if you make $20 trillion and you have to pay 5 million in taxes, oh darn. Right. If you've got a bad tax day, that means you had a really good year. And I'll never forget this person saying that. And so when you say, you know, the top 400 have paid less in taxes, that just makes me sad. It just yeah. really does. And when you tie it back to all the shit that's going on here in the South and you think about how the South was built. Mm -hmm. Again, the people who don't look like me who live in the South will always be on top of the heat always yeah. and those are the exact same people who will turn right around look down on the people whose shoulders they've stood on for generations and say why don't you just work harder why don't you just send your kids to a better school and yeah. you know, the the south sucks because we won't admit that we suck yeah and you know you you have this perpetual you know under educated populace that now sees this wealthy mouthy asshole who you know just happens to follow along some of the racist ideals that they might have brewing in the back of their head telling them oh i'm gonna cut your taxes i promise you you'll pay less and then he gets elected and he says look look at all these taxes i cut but he neglects to say what and whose taxes so they continue to believe that they are actually benefited from this when in fact it is the impoverished in this country regardless of their skin color that has suffered the most under trump oh yeah but they buy into his bullshit. they also do things like only watch fox news and that's the only place that they get their news from so you know they they, they believe it and they can they will vote for him again oh yeah i i've already my, my chin strap has been buckled I still believe that fucker's going to win another term. Yeah. I do. And the sad part, this is the downside. Because I've always said this about the First Amendment, which is probably the most bastardized and castrated amendment we have. Freedom of speech protects the forms of speech that you don't agree with. So mm -hmm. Fox News is allowed to get up and say the bullshit that they say. And they are mm. protected by First Amendment rights. Mm. If it was up to me, I would shut that propaganda factory down. Yeah, Just I would, down. especially the fact that they're still able to call, even though they're now listed as an entertainment channel, yeah. they can still call themselves news. And that is oh, yeah. not okay. It's not. You know? I can't remember if we hammered this out the last time, but I mean, I, I I never took Fox News seriously. But my tipping point was, <clears throat> I can't remember the uh, Harambe, what, it, was, uh, it was a zoo in California. And mm -hmm. the kid who fell into the gorilla pit and the gorilla was running the kid around and they put the gorilla down. Every other news station ran a story on the ethics on why it is they had to shoot the gorilla and no one was happy about it it's like look it was a split second decision it wasn't hard but it sucked and i can't remember who it was but one of them even had a zoo expert an animal expert it's like look you don't understand this is why we did it an animal that size and that maturity level can go from zero to holy shit and half a second flat. And an animal that size, if you gave that animal a ripe coconut, could crush it with one hand. We could not take the chance of that happening to that kid. Yeah. That's not what Fox News reported. 
Fox News found out that the boy's dad had committed a crime. Oh, fuck me. And they ran a story about how this dude went to jail. And the most fucked up portion is that the dude served his time. At the time of the accident, he was at work earning money for his family. And they ran a story that this dude had gone to jail. They didn't talk about the ethics of the case. They didn't talk about, look, that was a pure accident. I've held a kid's hand before, even though I'm not a father. And literally, it's one of those, hey, what's that over there? And you turn around, and this kid is gone. And I panicked, and it wasn't even my fucking kid. So these mm-hmm. things just happened. Fox News decided, we're going to run a story on the fact that this boy had a felon for a dad. And so mm-hmm. it's just like, what else do you need to know about this piece of shit propaganda factory? So they are only alive because of the First Amendment protects the bullshit that comes out of their mouth. And that's, yeah, that's where people get this. Oh, this is going to be bad. What On the same thinking? line, um, they continuously called George Floyd a lifelong criminal. And this made it, they, they actually talked them, yeah, no surprise. Yeah. <laughs> they actually taught, made it sound as if he deserved it. Because oh, yeah. he had yeah. gotten caught with a little bit of dope once or twice. Like he deserved to have a, a power hungry piece of shit kneel on his neck for nine fucking minutes while he begged for his life. Pretty much. Yeah. And the sad part is, again, just like that person I had back and forth with on Twitter, if at this stage of the game, I have to tell you, that there are after effects from slavery, then you're not worth my conversation. If I have to tell you that there are residual effects, fuck you. If uh, Candace Owens, during her monumentally stupid ass diatribe, that black people are the only ones that raise their criminal element, you know, to the uh, status of martyr, it's like, first and foremost, that's not true. That's just so stupid. It's not worth discussing. Two, you clearly have never spent a dollar bill in your entire fucking life because we have slave owners on our fucking money. Whatever you're blaming black people for, white people wrote the fucking book on it. And three, it doesn't matter because she said that he held a gun to a lady's stomach, which is bad. No, I, this is not someone that I would let date my daughter or my sister. Mm -hmm. but no one deserves, especially over um, allegedly writing a $20 hot check or using a fake bill. It was a a for, they thought it was a forged bill, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. And whatever he did to that lady, if that's true, had nothing to do with the moment. Nor did they even know that. Because they're looking to demonize and you want to, you want to reel this all back to the fucking South. That's the reason why. And I've told people this before. I lost. I left a therapy group for it. Again, black people are still fucking animals yeah. in this country. And anyone who thinks that I'm exaggerating, go look at the fucking George Floyd film. Yeah. Because I there's a friend of mine that we kind of had this back and forth and she just couldn't get it. And I asked her, when was the last time you lost sleep? because you stepped on a roach. And she was like, never. It's like, exactly. Because he put his knee on something that he didn't think was as human as he was. That's why Mm -hmm. he just looked blank, hands in his fucking pockets, right? And again, reason number one why the South will never go anywhere, we won't admit we're fucked up. Two, there's still people who look like me who are still going to be a permanent underclass. And by underclass, still property. Still yeah. property. Um, another nice little video uh, taken right here in my state, uh, Ahmad Arbery. You know, what they did to him, you know, like yeah. you said, treat him like an animal. But then I, I said to, it, like, that wasn't bad enough for the cops in that town to protect 
those motherfuckers for two months when they had the film and they clearly knew who did it because reasons i don't know i still you know it was it took until the georgia bureau of investigations had to step in and say what the fuck happened and they had to turn over their evidence they saw the tape and within 36 hours those bitches were in jail how does that happen anywhere in the world let alone in america that men can you know chase a young man down in their vehicle beat him and then shoot him like an animal have it on videotape have the cops have that videotape and they stay home and are safe and happy and warm with their family exactly because you're, we're again I, I said this on another interview i'll say it now and i will probably go to my grave saying this we're still not human mm -hmm. we're still not human the south will never make strides Again, until one, the South admits that the South is fucked up. And two, all the people who aren't people, it, it, we will always have this power struggle. Right? I mean, before yeah. their Mr. You know, Ahmaud Aubrey, Thor, rest his soul, just 90 minutes from my house was James Byrd, mm -hmm. a black man. I think when he passed, was younger than me, maybe right at my age. They put a chain around his neck. They bound his hands. They put the other end of that chain on the back of a fucking pickup truck. While he was still alive, they drugged that man till not when he was dead, because that would have been way too nice. They mm -hmm. drugged that man till his head separated from his fucking body. And you realize mm -hmm. just last year, we finally put one of those fuckers to death. I'm not even a death penalty advocate. Yeah. But like, there's there's no trial to be had. Just take those fuck faces out back and beat their heads with a fucking mallet. Let's end this now. And yeah. now it's bleeding over till now. Yeah, a, a black man goes for a jog and doesn't come home. And mm -hmm. what does Fox News fucking do? And the Shapiro's and what's that? Stephen Crowder and all those other fuck faces. They show mm -hmm. video of him walking through the skeleton of a house. Well, what was he doing in that house? He could have stolen tools. And that's no. where he's being shot the fucking street like a dog. But he, he didn't even know. But he, he did didn't it. even right. touch anything. Like, you, you know what's real fun? That. Yeah. My it, son and I, every time they build tons of houses, right. my son and I are always going into Same. houses like that. Same. Everybody fucking does that. And they showed, uh, there were videos of Ahmaud Arbery going through that house. Now, if you watch Shapiro... Crowder, Fox News, that's all they show. Then yep. some white people are like, I did that. And then they showed the videos of the white people. He was like, we were there right after Ahmaud Aubrey. And there was yep. one video that I loved. And I wish I would have, I was probably too angry at the point to retweet the shit out of it. They thought Ahmaud Aubrey had stolen something. So that's why they stopped him and killed him. A white mm -hmm. guy, he went jogging on the exact same route as the victim, holding on to a flat screen TV and just running and just running and just running. So I, and he filmed it. It's like he never got stopped. No one questioned him. Mm -hmm. This boy was suspected because I talked to someone on Twitter like, well, you know, People do steal power tools and they sell them on the black market. It's like, one, I don't give a fuck. Two, it's not worth the boy's life. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, white what? man shows a video of him running down the street repeatedly with a flat screen TV underneath his arm. He said, I was never questioned a single time. There is, there is nothing, no material substance on this planet that is worth someone's life for that. Couldn't not agree. only that, but these people were not, there weren't cops or anything like that. They worked for, I think they were, you know, the father and son, not the, not the guy who was, uh, had the camera, but the father and son, um, they worked at the court. I think they, you know, took people through the security or whatever. And that's why they ended up getting protected by the police. But these aren't cops. They had no reason. This wasn't their house. None of that. They weren't right. threatened right. in any way. You know, the only thing that was threatening was when the father went after Ahmad with the shotgun and he went and hit him in the stomach. Ahmad tried to grab at it 
to stop from getting hit in the stomach. And that's when the son took a shot. And that was their reason. Oh, we were just protecting ourselves. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. These are the people that have never been in a physical altercation before. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you something. If you swing at me, I may fuck around and swing at you back. And I, I when I see those videos of some fucking asshole, you know, doing the Third Reich salute, you know, with the swastika or calling black people niggers, and the black dude picks this fucker up and choke slams him to the ground. Every time I retweet, there's always a handful of people who will DM me and jump my shit saying, you know, why are you promoting violence? I'm like, did you not see this asshole call the black dude a nigger 99 times to his face? Mm -hmm. and so it was like, don't ask more for me than what you're willing to give yourself. If you come at me with a shotgun and you try and hit me in the stomach with it, I may try and kick your ass. Yeah. And so don't call this dude a fucking animal or say that he was a threat when all he was trying to do was get his exercise on. You interrupted his flow. You came at him with a loaded weapon. I would fight back too. I absolutely fucking would. <laughs> Again, don't ask more for me. If you want to go home tonight, guess what? So do I. Don't threaten me and I won't fight you. I call that an even trade. You know, um, the, the guy who took the video of the whole thing, who wasn't arrested until I think over a month after the you know the father son were arrested turned out uh first of all he his his lawyer and his family keep saying oh you know don't judge him too quickly which is fucking ridiculous because they looked at this kid saw the color of his skin and fucking killed him they didn't you know give him time right. to get judged or anything like that but it turns out that they found some shit on his computer after they arrested him i think i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it was child porn um, so he was, yeah, more than just a racist piece of shit and a murderer who oh, gladly took a video oh, of the two men kill a young man in the street for no fucking reason. Um, but yeah, he was he was even worse. And but he also begged for uh, bail or bond because he doesn't want to get sick with COVID. What? Yeah. He was okay. Sick. One, I don't even know why I'm acting shocked. I. <laughs> if, if, if you're able to call someone, you know, horrible names and they find child porn on your computer, I shouldn't be shocked. And yeah, yeah if you're you're worried about getting COVID and the family of Ahmad Arbery, they're worried about getting over the worst day of their fucking lives. I'm sorry. <laughs> like I said, don't ask more for me than what you're willing to give yourself. If you catch the vid and you drown in your own lungs, after doing some shit like that, again, you just send me a letter and let me know when I'm supposed to feel sorry for you. I yeah. just I just don't. You can go, all three of them can go fuck yeah. themselves with a cactus. I truly do not care about mm -hmm. their lives. I'm not going to gloat when they die, but I'm also not going to be sad. Let's just say that. No. And then another lovely little thing out of my state um, is you know, we're a, Georgia is a stand your ground state. But, it, you know, all the data and all the studies suggest that standard ground does not apply to black people, especially black men. Oh, yeah. Because there was an incident where um, a young black man, I think he was 23 at the time. Um, actually, yeah, because this was this year, so he still is 23. Was driving down the road and this big ass, he's in this tiny little you know, clunker, regular vehicle, and this big ass, you know, one of those Southern trucks with the really fucking big tires. Oh, and the, I have a small yeah. dick, can't you tell? <laughs> um, yeah, it comes and almost runs him off the road, and then these people are uh, screaming the N-word at him and continuing to try to run him off the road, and he had a registered firearm in his vehicle and stood his ground, and he shot at the vehicle. He didn't mean to, he wasn't actually aiming for anybody, um, but there happened to be a teenage girl in the back and she was shot and killed and they will not give, they didn't even, um, list it as self-defense in any way whatsoever or bring it up, uh, when they charged him and he's still sitting in jail waiting because, but if he had been a white man, this would not be a thing because he did exactly, you know, and it wasn't just, it's not just his, um, his, Side over the other side because there there are people that witnessed it 
that said, you know, no, this is what happened. They were trying to run off the road. We heard racial slurs. The fact is, though, that they took four times more witness testimony from the kids in the the truck than they did from him and his girlfriend who was in the car. And like I said, it's not listed anywhere in the report uh, as it, it being self-defense in any way. And so he is still in jail and they won't they they won't bring up the standard ground law. And this is one of the issues where I, I know I don't know how I, I don't know enough about it to have that much of an opinion about the standard ground law. But I do know that if you're going to have a law, it should work across the board, regardless of something. Absolutely. 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 That's that, that, that right there just chaps my hide. Because again, that that is what I just said times a million. Again, if there's a video of me and I'm choking the life out of somebody because he called me the N word 900 times, you don't get to say that I'm the one being violent. You just don't. Mm -hmm. Would you try to run someone off the road with your souped up pickup truck, probably a couple shotguns in the window, Confederate mm -hmm. flag? And that person feeling threatened and they pull out the firearm and they shoot that person did not commit an act of violence and no one will ever get me to say they did right it's 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 kind of like when trump said there was violence on both sides it's like no there wasn't violence on the both sides because you'll never guess what every gathering i've ever been to where the ku klux klan and nazis didn't show up we just had barbecue, we did the electric slide, and we had a great fucking time. Yep. Add some racists in there, you may find around and fucking around and get in a fist fight. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, don't ask the black dude to keep his gun holstered. Tell these fuckers, don't run the black dude off the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sad that an innocent white girl got shot. Those kids in the truck should be charged with murder. I'm about to say, whoever was driving, whoever initiated this bullshit, there's your criminal. Yeah, absolutely. Again, and I told someone this over DM because this one of the people who continue to uh, hit me up when I retweet those videos. I don't even believe in luck, but I just knocked on some wood. If you tell me you're going to murder my mom, I'm not going to sit and wait for you to make the first move to see if you're bullshitting. If yeah. you say something like that, I'm going to fuck you up and it's not going to be pretty. My only mission mm -hmm. is to protect my mom. I'm not going to yeah. sit and wait to see if you're full of shit or if you're serious. Mm -hmm. right? If you want me to keep my gun by my hip, don't run me off the fucking road. This mm -hmm. is an even power exchange. Yeah. I will treat you the way you treat me. It's just that simple. And again, I am sad that some poor little girl who just thought she was joyriding mm -hmm. with some fucking racist didn't go home that night. Yep. I, again, I don't gloat for anyone's death. That was not that young black man's fault. It wasn't. Again, don't no. call him a criminal. Don't say he's being violent. Tell those white boys who was driving the pickup truck, don't run black people off the road. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. Just that simple. Uh, real quick, my really good friend, one of my best friends actually, B, wants to know if your shirt says Wonder Woman. Does it? It sure the fuck does. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> one of my little ones got me this shirt. And yes, it is a Wonder Woman tank top. And I wear the shit out of it with pretty much all the shirts that I have were donated. And they all have a story behind them, but good eye. That's wait, B. <laughs> B. Well, um, I, um, you know who B is. Yeah. The family. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Hi, B. <laughs> yes, B. You, you got it. That is my Wonder Woman t shirt given to me by Sloan. I love Sloan. Good eye. Yes, that's a Wonder Woman t shirt. You wear a lot of Superman t-shirts too, which we love. Oh man, I've got a lot of Superman, Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern. Actually, I think I the majority of my collection is DC. 
I've got, got some Star, Star Wars too, though. I've got some Star I'm Wars, jumping. and I wore a Marvel shirt. It's it's a Mount Rushmore looking picture, except it's Hulk, Captain America, Spider Man, and Wolverine. So, Very yeah, cool. my people love me, and they send me stupid shit. <laughs> I, I got some, I, you know, I was I've been sick. And so my friends and, and, and everybody in our little community put together a, a, a nice wish list for me. And they bought me things, including a lot of sex toys, but I'm good with that. So. <laughs> you oh. should have seen some of the stuff that was on the list that my, especially my friend Dave Critical Cripple put on it impressed so you do any you should do an unboxing i am actually you, i you know i thought about it and usually it. it's so annoying when you know because it's like watching little kids open their gifts but I unboxing don't for, i don't give a shit i love watching unboxing videos okay because we never get you, you say that I, I think it's still in effect but ted cruz and ted cruz can lick my ass Look, yeah. but Ted Cruz, <laughs> I don't think I'm making this up, and I'll look it up to make sure I'm telling you the truth. Uh, banned dildos in the state From of where? Texas. That's yeah, good luck with, with uh, keeping that as long. I mean, I mean, you can still, right? I mean, I'm sure people are still jerking it with uh, dildos, but yeah, uh. Maybe the sale of dildos. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, hold on, make sure. Yeah, yeah. In That's 2016, there is a ban on penis-shaped uh, sex toys. Thank you, Ted Cruz. And what uh, earthly reason oh, did he give for that, though? Like they're dangerous. We're talking about a guy who believes in talking snakes and pregnant virgins. Yeah, I guess that's so, true. <laughs> again, I will do research to make sure that I'm not telling people a lie. But, uh, yeah. It, that is fucking you, nuts. If you can get people to believe absurdities, you can get them to commit atrocities. Mm -hmm. And so, even if this isn't 100% factual, and again, I will do more research to make sure I'm not telling people lies. Is it really that far of a reach? No. Again, hey, Ted, just so you know, the Earth isn't 6,000 years old. You got to get fucked to get pregnant. Snakes actually don't have vocal cords, and it is impossible for a man and a woman to populate an entire planet on their own. Ted. Now, to you and I, that's some stupid-ass shit. To Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. that's literally the gospel truth. And so is yeah. it really that far of a reach for someone to say impaling your vagina or your asshole with a plastic black studded penis is evil <laughs> and sinful? Or would you really be that shocked? <laughs> if yeah. so, so no. Wow. You know, see, and, and I know this sounds weird, but this is why things like, you know, going so far with these abortion laws is a slippery slope because they take a little piece at a time and they say, well, okay, we got away with this. So what other things that we don't like can we take away? I mean, eventually they'll uh, try to take away, you know, same-sex marriage because it, you know, it it took no time whatsoever for us to legalize that. It's not like it wasn't a struggle for fucking ever. But again, I mean, to quote noted historian and philosopher Whoopi Goldberg, if you don't agree with gay marriage, don't agree with gay marriage, don't marry a gay person, right? Yeah, all all right? these problems are easily solvable. If you don't believe in abortion, don't have okay. one. If yeah. you don't think uh, sex toys are good, don't buy one. It's really just that simple. And yeah. again, if and it still reminds me of again another one of my, I, I actually unfollowed this idiot. Every time I talk about how Christianity is not a private belief on how I still get people knocking on my door, I've never put my phone number on a church registry and they still call me to invite me. They knock on my door and now these idiots are taking COVID 
as a sign of revelation coming true. And I've never had the opportunity to take a real picture of it. But now, not only is it the adults, but I don't think these kids are over the age of 12. No. And they're on the street corners, busy intersections with signs. You know, if you want to avoid hell, ask me how, you know, faggots are going to burn and die forever. And I'm like, if you kept this shit to yourself, you would never hear from me. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm forced That's to deal it. with it. So I'm going to talk shit about you. I'm going to talk crazy shit about you. And again, yeah. So apparently it is true. In 2007, uh, Ted Cruz, co- I guess, co-authored the bill to kill uh, sex toy sales in 2007. Again, if you don't oh, want to jerk off with Astroglide, uh, a, a dildo, if you don't want a gimp's mask, which I'm pretty sure he owns a closet full of this shit, <laughs> then don't buy it. Right? And if you want to get your freak on, then go to the fucking store and buy it. What mm-hmm. what 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 does my sex life do to the my next door neighbor? Not a goddamn thing. So it's got nothing to do with them. Yeah. Right? And so if someone wants to buy 52 dildos. Let them buy what harm dildos. is that? None yeah. at all. None at all. No. None at all. Speaking of dildos and fun sex stuff, uh, <laughs> my friend Julie the Voice hosts this show called Wine and Reason that I'm actually doing with her this Tuesday. And oftentimes she uh, will speak about dildos and sex stuff, and it's fun. So anybody who isn't subscribed to her, do so. One of my mods, and she's a mod if she wants to throw it in her chat in there, or her link in the chat. You, you Julie had the me. Voice. I love hearing about it. She is awesome. Um, so, I, I you know I kind of thought this might happen, um, but how would you feel about coming back? And and I thought I might actually speaking of Julie might bring her on as well because she's a Southerner and her partner, um, and we could talk about our you know personal reasons why we have issues. So we've been almost an hour and a half. Okay, and, I would love to. I would love great. to. These are fun. Like I said, it. It took me all this time to go look at our first one, and it was great. <laughs> so I'm just like, fuck yeah, I'm doing it again. So yeah, anytime you want me to come back. Why do you I'll think do I asked you as one of my our guests for that other panel show? So <laughs> <laughs> what? Because because I'm because I'm not afraid to talk about my fuck stick and my orange pussy. <laughs> 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 On well, that's me. you. But because I think we have a good rapport. And we definitely I have good chemistry. I, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. All right. Awesome. Um, uh, why don't you, I, I didn't get to, We were. I was maybe very stoned at the beginning of the show and didn't get a chance to ask you to tell everybody who you are and what you do. So why don't you do that now? <laughs> like I said, we, we, we both came in this interview a little enhanced. <laughs> My name is Robert Reed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> born and raised hardcore Christian. Clearly, I am not anymore. I'm um, a women's self defense teacher. I love talking. Hold on. I'm so bad at the pointing because my screen is always backwards. I love talking to this one over here. How about this? I'll, I'll cover both my points here. Uh, yeah. I've got two dogs and an orange pussy. I'm all for the sale of sex toys. And I think kids should get sex education. And I think the South is ridiculously bass backwards, and I won't be alive to see the South make the change. Nope. <laughs> I don't think this country will be, to be honest with Probably you. Probably not, no. but we'll keep trying. I'll keep fighting. We all will, but it's yeah. going to be for like five generations down the road. Who knows? We try. Uh, you have your own channel. You want to tell us about I that? Do. I do. I do. Uh the first one I'm with is uh, Peter, Lilith, this guy, and Artie, uh, Herding mm-hmm. Kittens, where we bring uh, theists on. They get to do the whole what do you believe and why. And I've got Stronger with Robert Reed now. And I'm hoping to get my second episode going. Uh, it is a channel completely dedicated to mental health. And I don't know if I've said this out loud. I saw the first episode with Peter and Lilith. And I cried like a baby. It, it's it's hard to hear yourself say certain things about yourself, even though yeah. it's yourself and you were there and you experienced it all. 
I cried my ass off. That was hard. And yeah. the next two episodes, I've already have slightly scripted, and it's going to be even more raw material. So, one, Good. I'm going to cry. And two, I hope you'll watch it because maybe it'll help somebody out. I cried on your first episode. Um, not only that, and I, I said this last time, but I just super appreciate what you're doing because such a, you know, strong, intelligent, stable man like yourself to be able to, to sit here and communicate with people that, you know, mental health is a thing, mental illness is needs to be unstigmatized i uh, you know it, it just it does so much for the whole world really to be able to say you know we don't have to be ashamed of this we can talk about it it's okay and I, to like, honestly, yes. honestly and truly. i you know just thank you so much for that and so we look forward to your next two um episodes I uh, don't week, yes. <laughs> uh, a critical cripples quiz that I tried we've been trying to get you on. This is his last week um, okay. of season, so I'm I'm snagging you. Pick a morning, and I'm I'm bringing you in this week. So uh, I will do it. Nah, I can tell you, man, I'm trying to think of who's in town this week. Probably it's at eight ten Eastern Standard Time. It's what it's what time? Eight ten Eastern Standard Time. I'm so bad at the conversion. So is that six for me? Oh, I'm so used to that. <laughs> um, wait, wait, you're in Texas? I'm in Texas. I'm central. Okay. So you're so, an hour behind me. So it's seven ten. Seven. Is that then that's PM or AM? AM. AM. Yeah. Uh, actually. Uh, yeah, because my normal 7 o'clock will be out of town starting Wednesday. So I bet you I can do one of those. You want, you want to do Wednesday? When, let's do it. Okay. It, it's not like I'm going to be so excited. I don't sleep for shit. I've been up yeah, there around midnight yesterday. So yeah. 7 o'clock for me is like 4 p.m. for everybody else. So yeah, not a problem. Okay, he he's Send me been, a reminder. Send me a reminder. I will, I will. But I Thank swear, he ever since or the last time we did this, uh, he's been bugging. He's like, "Did you have Robert? Did Robert want to come on?" <laughs> so Robert will do it. And again, we can talk about my fuck stick and my orange pussy. I don't have any you problem with that. <laughs> uh, trust me, that's pretty much most of the show is just you know, surprising <laughs> and dirty jokes. <laughs> I love it already. Then, <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming on again and we will pick a time and continue this honestly we could probably do a couple more episodes about the south i, it, I have fun with this yeah, let's bring it please do <laughs> please do awesome i appreciate you so much robert thank you oh, and wow. thank you to everybody who came we'll see you next time think critically bye Peace.